marriage relationship, you're bringing much more to that setting than just images. You're bringing all that the couple has shared outside the bedroom, the sacrifice, the, the communication, the, the loving each other. Everything you're bringing to that setting is then part of that experience. With pornography, all of that is missing. It's gone. And so it's a very narrowly focused, pleasure center stimulating activity that uh, releases those chemicals. And they're very narrow in their focus. And in order for the, the brain will quickly habituate to that intense level of chemical release. And once the brain bores to it, it then needs more to get the same rush. Well, is this, uh, many uh, people describe that uh, rush where they, uh, they start maybe looking at milder forms of pornography, but very quickly they deviate down to harder and harder material. Uh, is that the chemical that is driving them? Chemical well, that's, that's the habituation nature of the brain itself. Our brain will very naturally bore to an activity the more we do it. And then in order to get the same chemical release of dopamine and endorphins, you have to, do, you have to take that activity to a higher level. And so those who view porn will either start spending more time, uh, they'll increase the intensity or the variety of the images. And the problem, Pat, with the Internet is it's an unlimited amount of, of content there and so as soon as the brain bores or habituates, you can go to the next site or the next level and just keep ratcheting that up endlessly until you've progressed to places that you never thought you would. I follow uh, the news stories on uh, child pornography as well as adult pornography of uh, people who are convicted of these uh, crimes. Uh, when I left the Justice Department as the uh, chief of the child exploitation and obscenity section 17 years ago, we could say that the problem of child pornography in America was, was not resolved, but was under control. Today we have millions of child pornographers. Isn't that the reason we have, uh, we have many people who deviate, they start with the milder stuff, keep deviating to whatever excites them, what used to excite them doesn't excite them, but eventually some will deviate down to child pornography because that's the only thing that excites them. Have you seen yeah, that? We actually have a lot, yeah, we have a lot of individuals we've worked with over the years who never, they didn't start with child pornography. They started with what we would, the industry would call soft core, core pornography, for example. The brain would habituate to that. They'd go to the next level and the next level. And finally, they had to find something so extreme to get that, that same chemical rush that some would turn to child pornography. Now, not necessarily because they started out as sexually attracted to children. What people have to understand is that we, when people view pornography, the reason the chemical response in the brain is so powerful is not just because of the sexual images. It's the other emotions that come to the mix. Uh, emotions like shame, guilt, um, fear, uh, taboo. Uh, in fact, the more taboo something is when it's being viewed, the more the brain will release those chemicals. Oh, I shouldn't be looking at this. This is disgusting. I have children of my own. Oh, if someone discovers me, I'm going to prison. Those kinds of emotions actually increase the brain's chemical response, and, and the rush is higher. And so we've interviewed a lot of people who said, that's why I started going to child pornography. All of those intense emotions that had nothing to do with sexual attraction actually increased the intensity of my experience, and it became a drug that I couldn't resist. Mark, we have to wrap it up for today. Our guest is Mark Castleman. I want to do another segment to talk about how you treat those people who are addicted to pornography. The guest today, Mark Castleman, co-founder and director at Candeo, which is, uh, the website is CandeoCan, C-A-N-D-E-O-C-A-N.com. And Mark is the uh, author of this book, The Drug of the New Millennium. Mark Castleman, thanks very much. Thanks, Pat.